Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. I wanted to put together a quick video on how I use Google Forms to put together quizzes for students in my classes. So I have an earlier video talking about my use of Google Forms and how I use it as a survey tool. Uh, one of my favorite tools within the, the Google Apps suite. Um, but one of the things I like to do is I like to set up uh, quizzes for my students. And what I do is I allow them to create the items for the quiz and then give me items, I collect those, and then I turn those into the ultimate quiz that they will take. So the nice thing about this is it gets them thinking about the content, they think about possible items they like to see on the quiz, um, they can think about the, the broad complexity of content that might show up on the quiz, um, and then when they turn around they actually take the instrument, um, there's no real surprises in this. So I use Google Form um, and I wanted to, I just did this with a class this week and so one of my colleagues asked me how to do it so here we are taking a look at it. So I'm signed in right now to Google Drive. I'm in my institutional address right now but that doesn't really matter. You can do this anywhere. So what I do is I go into New, I go down to Google Forms. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a basic form and it's just going to get some uh, information but the primary thing here is I want to grab uh, the the item from the student. Um, I add more things in here but you don't really need to um, so what I'm going to say is uh, submit items for the uh, for quiz one and then what I'll do is uh, please add the info below to get ready for the quiz question one I'm gonna say uh, what is your name um, you don't have to ask them for their name I just feel like it's um, it helps me make sure that everyone you know fulfill their responsibilities a lot of times also I feel like if there's no name required um, students that don't get this done um, they feel like they're getting by because I don't have their name on a list so they for some reason they feel like they're um, you know I am more aware and others are more aware if I don't ask for their name uh, I typically have this as a paragraph um, even though their name isn't going to come up long but tech, usually I have issues when I use the short answer as opposed to paragraph. Uh, the paragraph all it does is it lets them add more content in there. It doesn't really do anything special to it. I make this a required item. I'm going to add another one. And what I'm going to say is, uh, what is your email address? I really don't need this either. Um, and it's telling me right now that it's going to have email selection. So I'm going to make this required and then I'm going to say what item would you on the on the first quiz. This one here I make it uh, a paragraph. This is required also. Um, I don't ask them to give me the answer to the, the item that they submit. A lot of times students uh, really want to give me the answer uh, and then students that are probably not prepared for the quiz and haven't read the materials they definitely want the answers um, but I just want the the item uh, there. I know what the answers are or I can quickly uh, differentiate between a right and a wrong answer. So this is pretty simple. It's basically submit items for quiz one. What's your name? What's your email address? What item would, like you, would you like to see? All of these are long answer. These are all required. I'm going to do a couple other things here. Um, one, I'm going to make sure I have a title up there. I'm going to go over to responses. Uh, as responses come in, it will basically you know list them here for me. But what I do is I start up a spreadsheet for this. So as we've talked about in the past, Google Forms is linked to Google Spreadsheets. All of the content that comes into the spreadsheet, into the form, is going to get pumped into the spreadsheet. So as students give responses, it'll show up over here. So what I do is I take this. It's still working. I don't know why. It's a very simple spreadsheet. Come on now. 
So what I do is I basically, I want to share this. So I'm going to change this and I'm going to say, on anyone with the link can view. Now we've talked about in the past, I could limit this to just my institutional address and institutional use of Google Apps. Um, but then I come into the risk of students that all of a sudden aren't signed in. Um, I don't really care if anybody sees this information outside of CSC, but usually I have an issue where a student is signed into their regular Gmail account and then they can't see it. So I'm going to hit save and I'm going to grab this link here, hit copy and done. So this is the spreadsheet where the responses will go. I'm going to go back to my quiz and go to the questions and then down here, I'm going to say, Please review the items that have already been submitted by checking out the spreadsheet here. And what I'm doing is I'm basically pasting in that link to this spreadsheet. So what I want is students to come in, see what's already been added. Um, after you have reviewed the submissions please add an item that you'd like to see on the quiz but hasn't already been submitted sorry and that I'm talking as I type but I feel like I do the same thing in my class um, I'm gonna get rid of this so now this is ready to go out to students I'm gonna make a couple changes here I can change the color palette and the theme if I want to I'm just gonna leave it the way that it is if I hit preview it's gonna show me what this looks like out in the wild I'm gonna click on the settings and ask it to collect email addresses I don't really need response receipts to this um, I'm going to require that it limits to students in my organization. Um, I don't really care if they have more than one response. Um, you know, if a student needs to get back in and change it, or if they want to go in and add more items, by all means, go ahead. Um, I don't need them to edit after submitting or anything else. Um, but now at this point, I can hit the presentation. Let's see what else is in here presentation there's only one page three questions not a big deal definitely don't shuffle that question order um, and they can add another one if they want I don't really care about the confirmation message right now um, and now I'm just gonna hit save so now if I look at this thing if I hit send I usually don't email it out to them what I'll do is I'll just grab a link I can shorten this and get a tiny URL so if I save this and I open it up in a new browser in a new tab this is what I get so students come in they can come here and see uh, what items have already been submitted it's going to bring them to this spreadsheet which they can only view so they can come in and see what other items have been submitted um, and then they can come down here and add their stuff and then hit submit after they do that um, what I will see is I'll see a bunch of submissions from students um, where they give me items so as an example this is the one that I just sent out so what I can do is I can see different items that they've already given me and I can see the the different things they like to see on the quiz and then all I do is I start up a new uh, quiz a new Google form and I basically say okay here's the title of the quiz last name first name who is your instructor and then I just go into the items they submit and I copy the items over I do some wordsmithing if I want to clean things up or clean up the logic a lot of times I'll extend the item a little bit but not too much um, typically in in items for this class what I want to have students do is talk talk about what is the content and then also position it a little bit from their perspective or their classroom um, so basically it's just you know streamlining the questions a little bit I don't want to you know wordsmith it too much for the students but I want to make sure that it's a valid and reliable assessment and it digs into my learning objectives so once again that's how I use 
Google Forms as a way to collect items I'd like to see on a quiz from the students so they construct the items for me and then I turn it around and I use Google Forms again to give them a quiz uh, for classes. It's a good way to have them use the tools, have them use technology, um, have some of the assessment practices outside of the classroom. Um, when they take the quiz, I basically have a couple different rules. I allow them to use uh, any and all notes, and I think I have it in the other quiz, in one of the quizzes here. Um, I basically allow them to use any and all notes that they want to use. They can use materials from the class. I think I have it up here. Um, free, uh, feel free to use your notes and text for the class. You can use your book. You're not allowed to phone a friend. You're not allowed to sign in and just have somebody else take it. Um, I give them a time limit, um, even though I don't really give them a time limit, but I want them to know that it should take them about an hour, a little over an hour to complete the quiz. If there's something really going on and they get locked out or it takes too much time or there's an issue, send me a note, send me a hangout, and let me know what the problem is. Um, but for the most part, they have a lot of latitude in how they get this done. Uh, I'm more looking at seeing how they process it and what they add to their responses. So once again, that's my use of Google Forms. Hopefully this helps you out. Um, by all means, uh, subscribe to the channel if it helps you out. Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down on this. Um, please leave comments or questions if there's something that doesn't make any sense. And by all means, if there's something that you're trying to figure out how to do, send me a note, ask me a question, and I can show you how and why I do some of these things. Thanks again, and have a great rest of the week.